Welcome to This Week on Campus, your weekly webcast featuring news and events at Western Iowa Tech. I'm Tyler Euchner. Now this week we'll be talking about some new events that will be featured here on campus. But first... The Comet Project is hosting an event to showcase their progress this semester. The, Com the Comet Project event will reveal what the Comet Project students have been working on. You can come over and go through a poster walk, visit booths, and you can even pick up some food. The event will be at the Rockland Conference Center on December 21st from 9.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Now, with the Western Iowa Tech nursing pro pin pinning ceremony will be happening this week. The pinning ceremony celebrates nursing students that are becoming registered nurses. The pinning ceremony will be on Thursday at 9 and another ceremony will begin at 11. You can stream the ceremony on YouTube at youtube.com slash wittv. The Student Center is now back open this year, and with that comes new hours. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Sunday from 8, 4 to 8 p.m., and Saturday they are closed. To find out any, for more, any more in, information, contact Mike Brown via email or even text. Now, let's go back in session. With that comes, comes brand new library hours. Sunday hours will be 5, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Wednesday will be 7.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. The Thursday hours will be 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m., then Friday will be 7.30 to 5. The library will be closed on Saturdays, but library chat is always available during, during that time. Now when we come back, Nathan Bowman will have an interview with Iowa State Representative Chris Hall. Stay with us. The day we've all been dreaming of is approaching, when life gets back to normal. But we're not there yet. So please, everybody, do your part. Get vaccinated against COVID-19 as soon as possible, because that's the best way to protect you. Protect them. Protect everybody. It's the best way to get Iowa back to normal. Find a COVID vaccine location near you at vaccinateiowa.gov. Wittstock is back and better than ever. We know you've missed that pre-pandemic sound and we've missed it too. That's why Wit TV has decided to give you the Wittstock you knew and combine it with the style of Glow. To kick things off, we have Winter Wayfarer. The Glow alumni return to Wit for a virtual concert experience. Now available at youtube.com slash Wit TV. Hello everybody, welcome back to This Week on Campus. Joining us is District 13, Iowa State Representative Chris Hall. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now, Representative Hall is a member of the Fiscal Committee and a ranking member of the Appropriations Committee. Welcome back to Western Iowa Tech and the WIT TV studios. Thank you, it's so great to be back. Now, I'd like to start off by asking you that college com community college funding has fluctuated greatly in the last five years. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you feel has caused that? There have been uh, a number of different factors uh, that have affected the state's ability to fund different programs. Um, in recent years, we've seen uh, the majority party in the governor's office uh, have allowed tax credits to become a larger expense to the state, which has meant other areas of investment have had to remain a little bit leaner. Uh, even as recent as 2017 and 18, uh, the governor actually had to borrow from our reserve accounts and make some mid-year cuts, which were very difficult for a lot of state agencies, including community colleges. I've been glad uh, that last year we started to make those increases in funding back in certain areas and that one of the areas to receive an improvement in funding was the community college system. Now, just kind of follow up, um, what changes do you foresee in the community college funding in this session? This session? Well, uh, just yesterday, actually, the state's revenue estimating conference gave the legislature a preview of what we'll have available to create our budget. So right now we have a better sense of the overall uh, size of the pie, and we have to choose over the coming months, starting in January, where those different slices of the pie go. Um, we do have growing revenue. We'll have about 3% more revenue this year than we did last, 
and we're projected to have even further growth in the coming year. How those dollars get allocated is largely going to be what we debate. Uh, I think that I've heard uh, a lot of interest in funding for mental health services. I've heard interest uh, coming from the majority party on some tax cuts. And I think that there's also a good potential for us to continue funding uh, and providing more to our community colleges, uh, hopefully also all of higher education and our K through 12 schools too. How important is growing funding for community colleges for better opportunities, especially in these times of tight labor, in the tight labor market? That's a great question. Uh, one of the things that we know is true of Iowa right now is that we're experiencing a workforce shortage. That means we have more jobs available than we actually have people to fill them. Community colleges are an amazing economic driver. Uh, they are an amazing economic driver during growth periods as well as periods of recession when people might be wanting to change careers or learn a new field or study and go into a new uh, field uh, you know, in the, in the professional sense. So people, I think, are looking to our community colleges as one of the ways that we can economically recover from uh, COVID. A lot of people were displaced from their jobs. They may be looking for work. They may be also acknowledging that they need to get a new skill set or do some additional study. Um, so I think community colleges really have a great uh, spotlight shining on them right now, a place of opportunity for local communities to recover and, and also for people to find further education if they're looking at a new job. Now, tell me that you were, you were the former grants uh, coordinator here at Western Iowa Tech. Yeah. Has that shaped your view of community colleges as, the, uh, as a legislator? Absolutely. Uh, I've always, I've, I've always thought that the community colleges are just one of the kind of quiet, unsung heroes of our state. They're a diamond, and not everybody knows about the value that they provide our state. I mentioned earlier that they're a true economic driver of sorts. They help small businesses hire employees. Uh, the vast majority of graduates from our community colleges also choose to stay in Iowa, which is really important and valuable for our economy. Um, I have always liked the community college system, but after working at the community colleges, I have a greater appreciation for the diversity of students that they really work with. It's people who are fresh out of high school, starting a new career, uh, they're learning and potentially looking to transfer to a four-year college. It's also uh, single parents or people who are mid-career or going back to try something new. And the fact that our community college system is equal access that anybody can attend community college, that we try to make it a more affordable option than some of the others that are out there, is really, really important, uh, both in terms of creating opportunity for people, but also for really broadening out those areas of opportunity within the state. The fact that every one of the 99 counties in Iowa has a community college that is in their backyard and that they fit into one of the community college service territories it just can't be said enough how valuable that is. Now, for people going to college that have kids, can you see the legislature moving to provide more support for those students? That ties in with some of the workforce challenges that we have right now. Uh, we've heard that a lot of people who may look to enter a career or fill one of those job openings are having a difficult time doing it because of things like uh, the uh, unavailability of childcare. So if they can't find a place for their child to get care during the daytime when maybe they would prefer to be taking classes or trying to work a part-time or a full-time job, that keeps them from re-entering the workforce. The legislature should be looking at trying to reduce some of those barriers and we should also be trying to make uh, the types of graduates that we have fit the jobs that are available. So if we see a lot of areas of growth, certain jobs that are high in demand, we should try to respond to those areas of growth and also try to train people or educate people to fit them and go into them if, if they're interested and they can earn a good living. Now, would you support an expansion of the Last Dollar Scholarship, or if so, do you know any programs that can it's, you could support? Mm -hmm. The Last Dollar Scholarship is aimed at trying to make community college affordable and especially at some of those high demand areas and fields. And there are always ways to improve it. Uh, there are always going to be ways that we can make a program 
like this, which is fairly new, we can learn from some of the things that we're hearing and some of the feedback we're getting and also try to improve them next year. Um, my hope is that there, we're looking at fields that may not be included in the list of high demand jobs. I know that child care is one of them, early childhood education. Um, we have a high demand for those jobs, but they're not eligible to receive the last dollar scholarship. And so the legislature needs to respond to that, and we need to make sure that the governor and some of her department heads are also responsive and learning from the areas that we can. That's a whole lot of good things to talk about here today. There's a ton of good stuff to talk about. Um, is there anything else you would like to add that we maybe haven't touched base upon or something you want to say? Uh, I, I really am happy to be back on campus today. Um, I think that everybody has been experiencing a lot of challenges the last year or so, both in our routines and how we're interacting with family or going to school or figuring out how to go to work. And so the fact that Western Iowa Tech has navigated those challenges and that the student body here has navigated those challenges, that you've got the studio open and that you're taking interviews and uh, back seeing each other and working together in person is awesome. No, thank you very much, Mr. Hall. Thank you so much for visiting and coming back to Western Iowa Tech. And we hope to see you back here again. I sure hope so too. We'll be right back right after these messages. I've been deployed overseas six times with multiple combat tours. I have had a bounty placed on my head by insurgent forces. I haven't missed a day, a beat, in my career. I haven't been in the hospital since the day I was born. Only one thing has been able to take me down, COVID. And now I've done my part to take COVID down, getting the vaccine. Even though there is so much against us, you will see me wearing a face covering. And even with my face covered, you will see me as a son, as a friend to everyone I meet, as a fighter for change, as a woman who stands up for what I believe in. So join me in wearing a face covering to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. Because this is one small act of kindness that has the power to bring us all together. Welcome back. With the Student Center being a bit more open this year, Western Iowa Tech is offering fitness classes for the rest of the semester. You can take classes for Taekwondo, Yoga, Zumba, Super Circuit, and Personal Protection. The classes are free if you have a valid student ID. Now, if you need to see a doctor and don't want to leave campus, you're in luck. Western Iowa Tech and Tri-State Nursing will be offering services for cold, flu, strep throat, STD testing, COVID testing, and much more. In-office services are free if you are, if the, the, the place will be open from Mondays through Thursdays from 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Kaiser Building in, in room A212. No appointment is needed. Now, have you been struggling with something? Try, try to have some coffee with the counselor. This weekly support group is a safe place to put your books down and decompress. They meet at 10 a.m. on Wednesdays in the library. Everyone is welcome to join relax and talk about what's going on in their lives. Now, this weather was warmer this week than, previ than previous weeks, but we also were in a tornado watch, which, which is thankfully over. Now, this up and coming week is starting to dip down into temperatures we typically see around this year. On Saturday, we are going to experience mo a mostly sunny day with winds picking up to 25 miles per hour, but the temp is going to be a cool 20 and later into the night, a chilling 10 degrees. On Sunday, it's going to be sunny for the day with winds and gusts hitting high for the day with a warm 42 and later into the night, a low 22. Monday, calm, calm and sunny day with temperatures hitting a warmer 35 and a low of 13. On Tuesday, sunny day with a high of 35 and a low of 18. Wednesday, it's looking to be mostly sunny with a high of 32 and the night being a chilling 16 degrees. 
And on Thursday, we'll, we'll see mostly sunny skies with a high of 33. Sadly, it's it's looking like we're going to be have we're gonna, not going to have any sm snow as we hit Christmas time. Now, events and information for Western Iowa Tech can be found on their social media pages. Just search Western Iowa Tech on YouTube, on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Make sure, be sure to follow for more updates. Now, if you have something that you would like publicized on This Week on Campus, send it to thisweekatwitcc.edu. This Week on Campus is a webcast from the Mass Communications Program here at Western Iowa Tech Community College in Sioux City, Iowa. New episodes for This Week on Campus are posted every Friday afternoon. For the latest content from our program, please visit our website, witcc.tv, where you can find a direct link to our YouTube page. Be sure to subscribe. And next week, we will have school on Monday and Tuesday. And we also wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays.